Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we've got just two things on deck. We're going over the last 24 hours of space weather, and we're offering some perspective on the statistics about the mega quake in Russia and the tsunami that is still crossing the Pacific. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find a mostly quiet day, although solar flaring is slowly creeping higher, and so are the geomagnetic conditions due to the solar wind. Not much in the way of eruptive activity, but there is reason to watch. The sunspots are still not showing potential to produce larger flares, but there is yet another new one incoming on the north. Definitely a twisted lead umber there, anxious to see what's coming in behind it. Meanwhile, here at Earth, the solar wind is just beginning to amplify this morning due to the coronal hole on the north. It's one of two up there right now, one departing and one facing Earth today. I was very proud to see so many of you on last night's video and on X commenting about how I've been saying coronal holes are the major earthquake producer on the sun since 2012. And so we are off to quakes where the eastern Pacific got more active, big shake felt in Guatemala, well above average off the California coastline, 6.6 in Fiji, but of course the big one, magnitude 8.8 .8 off the coast of Kamchatka, Russia. Folks, 8.8 .8 is tied for the sixth largest earthquake ever recorded, and it's the largest earthquake since the nine-pointer that struck Japan 14 years ago. As of this morning, the tsunami is still racing across the Pacific. After the entire North Pacific lit up on the buoy map, showing that the whole plate felt the shaking, we've seen tsunamis hitting coastlines in Japan, Russia, Alaska, Hawaii, where a six-foot wave was detected, largest so far and which flooded the harbor there, nearly four-foot wave seen in California and others up and down the coast from British Columbia to Mexico. But for those who know tsunami history, the conjugate point, opposite the quake on the Ring of Fire is always at risk, and that's Ecuador and the surrounding South American coastlines. Waves due to arrive in the coming two to six hours? I guess we could say the uptick in seismic activity here in July is continuing. It'll be a couple weeks before the solar polar fields data is updated, and we can see if this one fits the mega model. Folks, the last 48 hours to pre-order our new book is here. Shipping is expected in September. All pre-orders get signed and you'll get a PDF copy as well in your email when we ship the book. Inside it, it's everything about space weather and I do mean everything, expert level. We thoroughly debunk the mainstream story of the weather and climate and we follow that up with the real answer to what's driving the atmosphere, the sun, and all the ways it also hits earthquakes, volcanoes, and human health. Our catastrophism sections hit everything from the cycles to the evidence, details, and what to expect in the years ahead and what to do. This is my life's work, and it may just be our last book. Pre-order link is below. The pre-order ends tomorrow. Homesteading camp is this week. Each day is a new lesson and survival skill at Observer Ranch. We've got tactical training this weekend. I will be out there August 1st and 2nd for Q&As, personal meetups with observers who are there, and to do some tactical training myself. Lots happening the rest of the year as well. Check out the events. Book your stay at ObserverRanch.com. We'd really love to see you out there. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.